Now, I've been looking on Tubi recently for my bad movies, mainly the horror section because basically one in three of them will be completely unwatchable and today is one of those films. It's called Death Pool. It has 2.9 out of 10 on IMDb, 9% on Rotten Tomatoes. However, interestingly enough, it wasn't the ratings that attracted me to this film. No, what actually drew me to it was the plot. It sounds completely ridiculous. And it's also a lie. Because it says Johnny Taylor has a big problem. He loves to drown good-looking girls. Which is true until the halfway mark, and after that he's completely indiscriminate. Also, on Tubi it says a disturbed young man becomes obsessed with drowning beautiful young women in the same pool. Which is also wrong, because every single murder takes place in a different location, and most of them are aren't even pulls. So the movie starts with a flashback to the main character's childhood, when the babysitter once dunked his head in the pool. And this part annoys me because it's used to explain his fear of water, which makes sense, but it's also used to explain why he commits several horrific murders. I feel like if you're going to justify him murdering people, it has to be better than someone dunked my head in a pool once. <coughs> We then find out this opening scene was all a nightmare and we see a now grown up Johnny doing all the things traumatised movie characters do, such as waking up and drinking neat spirits in the morning, chain smoking and hitting a bong. We also see his fear of water in action and I just want to mention that he states in the film he is so afraid of water that he doesn't drink it. I used to hate water. I wouldn't drink it. So from what we see here, he's replaced water with hard liquor. The guy's liver must be completely fucked. We then meet his friend Brandon, and Brandon is his friend. That's it. I genuinely couldn't tell you anything about him except his name, and that goes for everyone in this film except Johnny. And even then, all I know is that he hates water and he loves to drown women. Two things that you could find on IMDb without even watching the movie. And talking of drowning, we get the first kill of the movie, when Brandon suggests to Johnny that they clean some pools because he's behind on his rent. And after they're done cleaning the pool, Johnny returns and acts like the creepiest motherfucker you've ever seen. You're a really good swimmer. Then he proceeds to drown her in the pool. You did. We then see Johnny celebrating his murder on the way home. Although apparently one murder isn't enough for this guy, so on the way home he spies the local swimming pool and decides he might as well go for two in one day. He then dresses up as a cleaner, pushes some random girl in the pool and drowns her too. I mean, he killed someone 15 minutes before this, and how did no one see him killing her? There's a huge fuck off window behind him, and are you telling me no one walked past and saw? What about CCTV? Other staff members? Lifeguards? Why is it so conveniently empty? So then, in the next scene, about five minutes after his last murder, the landlord knocks on the door for his rent. My dad is dropping off a check. In one hour. In one hour? Yeah, I swear. <laughs> That's three people in less than an hour. I'm pretty sure even the most infamous serial killers didn't have those numbers. However, it does highlight a massive issue with the film, because Johnny is murdering people left and right, and the film never really explains why he isn't caught immediately, because it's not like he's being subtle. From what we see him do, he should be in a jail cell the next day. He was the last person to see the first girl alive. There were almost certainly cameras at the pool where he killed the second girl, but okay, let's assume for a moment it wasn't that obvious. What about the third victim? He was the only person living there. Then he hightailed it without warning. I'm pretty sure a child could work out it was him. After this, he's staying at his parents' house, who don't seem to question why he left his last place in such a hurry. He's then visited by Brandon again, who brings up the fact that the girl whose pool they cleaned died the same day they were there. That bitch drowned the same day we were there. It's crazy. That's fucking crazy. That's coincidence. Anyway, Brandon says there's a party that night and they should go. Ass and titties. Ass and titties. So while swimming at the party, we get the fourth victim of the film, when the police come to report a noise complaint, leaving Johnny and another girl alone in the pool. It's a bit wrong that I really want to suck your dick. It's not going to suck itself. <laughs> I do wish I had more to say about the kills in this film, but it's drowning. He does the same thing for the whole movie and it never changes. Also, none of his victims have any personality. He may be murdering people, but who cares? He may as well be drowning action men for all I care. After this, Brandon shows up and is panicked about what happened, and Johnny just admits it was him. You're a fucking serial killer, man. Seems to be the case. 
I actually think this might be some of the worst dialogue I've ever heard. Anyway, Brandon is shocked, but for some reason is weirdly loyal, promising to not tell the cops. Of course not, bro. You're my bro, dude. I mean, I've seen those posts on Facebook saying like, you know, no matter what, you stick by your mates. But if one of my mates said, I've murdered four people, please don't tell anyone, I probably couldn't let that one slide. Johnny's then seen living in a shack doing the world's shortest morning workout. What was that, like four press-ups? I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure you need more than that. I mean, he's got a six pack. I've seen some bizarre diets online, but I've never seen the six pack diet that consists of four press-ups a day, a bottle of whiskey and chain smoking. Anyway, apparently he's here because he's hiding from the cops but he's going to parties every night, walking around in the open as if nothing's wrong, and he's having breakfast at his parents' house, which is the house he's supposed to be staying away from because apparently the police are looking for him there. You know, being on the run means trying to evade capture, not sleeping somewhere else. What he's done is essentially book into a hotel. Following this, we see the papers have dubbed him the Valley Drowner, and we actually see him talking to the cops. However, if you see, they've named him a serial killer. I hope I get to be a serial killer just like him someday. A serial killer being someone who's killed more than three people, meaning they've found the third victim's body, but somehow not figured out it was him. How is that possible? He was the only possible suspect. So then Brandon suggests they go to a porn shoot run by his uncle, a place which is full of girls and a pool. My uncle's having a pool party, a little porn shoot. Bitches everywhere. I mean, he didn't know his mate was a serial killer the first time, but now he does. So why he even suggests this, I have no idea. But as you'll see, this man's attitude to murder changes like the fucking wind. Anyway, while at the shoot, they see one of the girls, and Brandon says this. You wanna try drowning? Okay, okay, stop. He's gone from freaking the fuck out about murder, to not caring, to wanting to actively participate. He's just suddenly on board with murder for seemingly no reason. So they come up with this plan to get her alone. Johnny drowns her, although Brandon has an odd reaction to the plan that he himself suggested. That's not what I thought was gonna happen, man. You asked him to drown someone, he held her underwater and she drowned. What other outcomes was he thinking of here? How else could this have possibly ended? That's what you wanted me to do. I didn't say that. You wanna try drowning her? So in the next scene, he's back at his parents' house and his dad shows him the newspaper about the Valley Drowner. And I love how the headline is, Police Baffled. How could they possibly be baffled? Johnny then acts as guilty as possible when his parents bring up the killings. He drives to his ex's house, drowns her in the sink, makes out with her dead body, and then leaves. Tell me you love me. I feel like a serious issue with this movie is the fact he's killing someone in almost every single scene. So there's no time for the film to slow down and show us the consequences of his actions, and this is perfectly summed up in the next few scenes. Because while at a party, some guy brags about being the Valley Drowner. I'm the Valley Drowner. Not realising he's speaking to the actual Valley Drowner. This pisses Johnny off, so when he's in a pool with a girl, he throws a TV in the water, and then he does the first double drowning of the movie. <laughs> However, not five minutes after this has happened, they're buying weed from these three, he hits them over the head with a bottle, then drowns all three of them in a nearby container of water. That's five people in one night. Five people who I couldn't name. So anyway, in the next scene, everyone knows he's the Valley Drowner. And the theme for the party is the Valley Drowner. Yeah, hopefully he shows up. Now what annoys me is there's no reveal to how they found out he was the killer. He's killed 11 people. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me anyway, but at least show me how they found out. So they go to that Valley Drowner themed party because when you're wanted for 11 murders, the best thing you can do is go to a party and take shitloads of selfies with people. Although what I find funny is one of the guys there threatens to call the cops on him and this girl calls him a loser. Whatever, he's a loser. Oh yeah, what a fucking loser. Calling the cops about a violent serial killer. Who does that? Eventually one That's cop shows up and immediately loses him. Are you serious? One cop? Shouldn't the SWAT team be there? He's killed 11 people. Johnny then goes to some random people's house. We've never seen these guys before. What the plan was when he got here, I have no idea. But we do get the most messed up kill of the film. When an entire family confronts Johnny, he hits the dad over the head, drowns the mum in the sink, then drowns the dad in the toilet. After this, he has the nerve to say this to their daughter. You're gonna be okay, kid. I'm sure she'll be fine. 
I mean, you did just violently drown both her parents in front of her for no reason whatsoever, but I'm sure she'll be fine. Eventually, Brandon realises being best friends with a serial killer isn't actually a very good idea and wants to clear his name. Yeah, I gotta clear my name, bro. But clear his name of what? He may not have actually killed anyone, but he orchestrated and withheld information on several murders and helped hide a serial killer. He's not innocent by any means. Doesn't matter anyway because Johnny just drowns him. So after Johnny has accidentally killed both of his parents, we get the worst ending I've ever seen. When the cop is chasing him, he jumps into a river and next we see him on a beach. How did he get there? Did he swim to another country? The film never explains how he got here. And that's the end of the movie. So this movie sucks, as you can probably tell. The main issue is the story, because it goes like this. He goes to a party, finds a pretty girl, drowns her, and repeats. Until we reach the halfway mark, and the pretty girl rule goes out the window, and he just drowns anybody. Also, he drowns so many people so frequently, that the murders have the impact of a wet noodle. I look through the credits and see all these names, and I just can't picture any of them. There's also the glaring plot holes, and total lack of explanation as to what happened. How did he get away? How did they find out he was the killer? These are the things you want to know when watching something like this, but they just don't tell you. Anyway, that was the movie. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.